Welcome in to the Paul Kuharski podcast. I'm Paul Kuharski from paulkuharski.com. Even out of state, I've met the federal regulations to mention my name three times. We're going to talk about the state of the Titans roster in 2024 when a rebuild will be undeniable. Talk about Nicholas Petit Frayer's gambling suspension, Hassan Haskins' uh, legal trouble, which looks pretty ugly. And uh, a stat about Ryan Tannehill that uh, came across my Twitter feed before I got to 600 today uh, that reveals his accuracy when throwing to open receivers. I'm brought to you by Jaspers. Uh, Happy to be able to join you from the road. Here we go. Um, Why wait? So I... I wrote earlier this week about the state of the Titans roster coming up in 2024. So there's been a lot of debate about this year. So it's soft rebuild, all, all kinds of labels people want to put on what the Titans are doing this season when it's clear they're trying to, you know, begin to filter new younger people into the roster while sticking with, you know, uh, Ryan Tannehill and Derrick Henry, chief amongst them, but also, you know, a guy like uh, Danico Autry as some of the older pieces of a team that should keep it competitive in a not great division when they've got a second place schedule that influences three games in a still weak division. So some people responded to that, said, given how little the Titans have, in 2024, why wait to, to make these moves going forward, particularly at, at quarterback? Well, the reason to wait is because the stuff I just said. Titans believe that they can compete this year. And, um, you know, they still have tent pole guys on, on, on offense. So, you know, next year, the offensive tent poles are basically non existent. Chig Conquo you know, who's pretty established coming off his rookie year when you would expect his third year in 2024, he'd be a a key cog, but he's not that established yet. Traylon Burks, definitely not that established yet. You would expect him to be in a year. Third guy I wrote down is Peter Skoransky, who hasn't played a, a down yet. Super thin on offense next year when you expect Will Levis to be taking over as the quarterback and probably Tajay Spears uh, to become the lead running back. On defense, it's better. Jeffrey Simmons, Harold Landry, <clears throat> Kevin Byard, Amani Hooker, they'll be quarterback needy. Autry's contract will be up. Fulton's contract will be up. Uh, Al Shair signed only for a year. Sean Murphy Bunting signed only for a year. They'll have $84 million in cap space to re-sign their own to go through the free agent market, which won't be that good at their biggest position of need, wide receiver, but where you can find help. But listen, the Titans aren't looking. Titans management, Titans coaching staff isn't looking at 2024. The job is to win in 2023, especially Mike Vrabel. He's not going to take a down year. Got a winnable division. Um, And even if you can't win the AFC South and get one of the top four seeds, that seventh wildcard spot, as good as the AFC is, is still an attainable thing. And you get in the playoffs and you take your chances on what can happen. They're not going to play for 2024 in 2023, nor should you want them to. I'm just surprised at how many fans say, well, They're not going to the Super Bowl this year, and they're not going to win the Super Bowl this year. So screw this year, and they should start to think about 2024. But you want your team to be as competitive as it can be without making huge sacrifices for the future, and they've done that. They didn't extend Derrick Henry. They made it through this offseason without doing anything contractual for Ryan Tannehill. So they can be off the hook for both of those guys next year if they want to. I think they certainly will want to be for Tannehill. We'll see what's up with Henry based on how he does this year, based on how Spears does this year and all of that. But they've put themselves in a position where the the true rebuild doesn't come until next year. And some of the guys that will be a key piece of that true rebuild maybe get some experience this year. Spears is certain to get a lot of experience this year as a third down back, as a guy they'll use creatively 
on some early downs with Henry to supplement Henry. <coughs> Maybe taking a few steps from Henry, excuse me, a few snaps from Henry. Levis, you hope, you know, would get some mop up, mop up work at least in um, so some blowouts. Um, Titans getting blown out or doing the blowout, blowing out. You know, that doesn't come that often, but when it does, um, he'll get some preseason work, certainly, uh, that, that then he can think about and work on what came out of that during the season, during during practice. He'll get scout team work, and he'll sit and learn at, at Tannehill's side. There's value in, in all of that. I understand the idea of, of throw the rookie in and get him experience immediately in a lot of situations. But in most of those situations, you don't have a quarterback who's as good as Ryan Tannehill should be this year in the regular season at the very least. Nicholas Petit Frere very foolishly gets himself a six-game suspension. It wasn't that long ago that Taylor Lewan was suspended the first four games of the season for a PED violation, a performance enhancers uh, violation. So here are two seasons in relative short order where the Titans lose a starting tackle because of a suspension and puts them in a hole right out of the gate. It's really, really foolish. Some debate about where the blame goes. Look, the blame first, foremost, head of the line, one, A, B, C, D, E, F, two, three, four, Nicholas Petit Frere has to know the policy, has to obey the policy. Um, said in his statement to ESPN, even after attending a league presentation, he got this wrong. So he did a bad job of understanding the rule, processing the rule. Uh, look, we can all agree the rules are stupid here, that you get six games for this sort of gambling violation, not gambling on, on the NFL, gambling legally under Tennessee law, but gambling on – at the Titans facility or in the Titans parking lot, as opposed to, you know, 50 yards away, which would have been fine under the league's policy is, is stupid, but it's the rule and you have to know it and you have to follow it or you suffer a consequence like this. He's a bright guy. He's smarter than this. It was really stupid. He told Nick Suss of the Tennessean when Nick was working on a piece, when guys were getting suspended from other teams before this batch of, I think it was six guys came out, that he was unclear about what the policy was. Well, if you're unclear about the policy, A, you get yourself clear. And B, in the time before you're clear about the policy, you avoid it like crazy. <clears throat> excuse me, if you don't understand the PED policy, you don't take anything and you go to the trainers and the medical people and the people who handle such things and you get clarity. If you don't understand the gambling policy, the first thing you do is don't gamble in any way, shape or form until you get absolute clarity about the policy, which we all agree is stupid, but you have to follow the policy or you wind up with a six game knock here. This is a union failure in the big picture because a union has no say in this policy. No appeals process, none of that. Not that he'd win an appeal because I think he did what he did, but the union had no say in the creation of the policy or the rules, which is a, a ridiculous thing. The union just somehow let the league do this. Well, the league for the longest time was anti-gambling and then comes around because there's all this money to be made and then puts together a policy for players. Like, you can't bet on the NFL. We understand that. We understand why. But to, to, make, to make the rule about betting on other sports geographically specific, I think we all agree, it doesn't make sense if Nick, Nicholas Petit Frere is going to bet on something other than the NFL the idea that there's some shadiness to him doing it at the Titans facility or in the Titans parking lot, as opposed to across the street is pretty ridiculous. You know, either make a sweeping policy that you can't bet on anything or follow the law of the land and let him do what's allowed to be done in Tennessee with a strict NFL policy. They can't bet on the NFL. 
which makes perfect sense. There should be no betting on the NFL, obviously. Um, I do. I know a lot of people think that Vrabel shouldn't be on the hook here at all. The only reason I put Vrabel on the hook here at all is because he was incredibly nonchalant about answering questions about this topic, about teaching it to his players twice. Again, NPF, chiefly responsible for this. I can't emphasize that enough. It's on the player who committed the violation first and foremost, absolutely. But Vrabel was very nonchalant in answering it. And you are obligated as a coach when it comes to technique, when it comes to route running, when it comes to um, avoiding penalties, all of that stuff, you always has, have to teach to, and uh, forgive my use of the word dumb, because I don't really mean it in a negative way, but you have to teach to the dumbest guy in the room, right? And I've written about this in the past, and I've written about it several times over my 25 years. And and I, from the viewpoint of how annoying it must be if you're the smartest guy in the room. Like if you're a 10-year veteran and you've been over this and over this and you get it, and every camp you have to endure your position coach teaching the most basic thing until the, the guy in the room – who gets it the least easily, the guy in the room who needs the most coaching, the coach has to teach until that guy gets it. Right now, Vrabel can't know that NPF is the guy who doesn't get it, but he has to teach the gambling policy until everybody in the room gets it. And somehow one guy in the room didn't get it. So I do think he's culpable for that to a, small, small degree, especially when he arrogantly dismisses the idea that, you know, do you need to teach this hard or is there now that it's coming up as a league issue and he poo poos that. And then he gets, uh, then he has a guy who clearly didn't get it and got suspended for it. The NFL um, <clears throat> should change course on this and the players through their weak union, which now has a new leader should really push for a change on this rule is there a real danger of something happening from a guy betting on a baseball game i suppose that's where things could begin right um but this isn't a guy dealing with the book it's a guy dealing with FanDuel or bet mgm or DraftKings. um and so i find it hard to think out uh, uh a scenario where a guy gets in trouble outside of, you know, maybe getting himself in financial trouble with, with the frequency of his betting on his app, which is an issue, you know, you would hope he's monitoring himself or his financial advisor has a sense of happening or his agent. Um, but I guess that's where the league thinks like if a guy develops a gambling problem, with baseball or basketball or whatever, then the temptation to do something football related grows and he could get himself in trouble. But there's a haphazard thing that feels slapped together, ineffective, and how it could have a bigger, steeper penalty and something like PEDs just doesn't make sense. The union blew it by not getting involved. It's hard to go get involved when you weren't involved at the beginning. <clears throat> they need to find a way to do that, but they're very ineffective. Um, meanwhile, Jamarco Jones, Jalen Duncan. I, I'm not convinced the Titans are going to go out and find themselves a, an additional tackle. I, I think they would go to uh, what their plan is. A lot of people want to kick. Uh, a lot of fans want to kick uh, Andre Dillard to right tackle, play Skaronski at left tackle, and then fill left guard, which leaves another hole. You don't want to put Aaron Brewer back there, and then you, you know, your backup center, Corey Levin. What's the worst-case scenario? I wouldn't want to move a lot of positions around. My preference would be that they plug right tackle for six games. I know people don't like Jamarco Jones, but we haven't seen Jamarco Jones, who was hurt very quickly last year. Jalen Duncan, it would be a crash course. But automatically that guy's, you know, NPF was going to need help. 
whoever replaces him is going to need more help. You're taking people out of routes and you're hurting the offense. It's a bad development all around. Bad, bad, bad. I'm brought to you by Jasper's. Great restaurant. Great place to have some drinks on West End Avenue, not far from downtown. Free parking, free uh, games. You play ski ball, air hockey, pop a shot, a whole bunch of stuff in the free game rooms. Terrific. Go there, <clears throat> have a business lunch. I did that lately and uh, had the Cuban sandwich, which is fantastic. You can uh, take a date for date night, take the family for a family dinner. Um, if, if you don't have time, unfortunately for you, you could stop at the grab and go market, grab something. If you have friends in from out of town, the grab and go market's a great spot to get some, uh, Nashville type souvenirs. So, um, great spot all around, good food, good prices, good drinks, free parking, everything you want. Be sure to hit Jasper's on West end. Um, I'm on vacation, obviously, as I am not in my general setting spent some time down um on the florida gulf coast for a baseball tournament and some some sun now uh with some family went to see indian jones and the dial of destiny look it was a fun movie um but i, I and it's maybe the it's the first movie i've gone to since um since the top gun sequel uh I don't go, I don't like going out for movies. People talk in there and can't shut up or get off their phones or all of that stuff. And things are on TV fast enough for me, but I was glad I went and uh, I had, I had a good time. It's two hours and 34 minutes though. And I think these studios are compelled with the big movies to feel like they give you your money's worth by giving you two and a half hours. Didn't need to be two and a half hours. Could have edited it down. Very clear where they could have edited it down. So I think that's a problem. Don't feel compelled to give me my money's worth or give me my money's worth in a, you know, tight movie. You could have cut 15, 20 minutes out of this movie. It would have been better for it. Um, I would love to see, by the way, you know, and I, I, it, I don't think it would dishonor the Indiana Jones series or anything, but Phoebe Waller-Bridge was great in this movie as his, uh, I wouldn't say sidekick. She was kind of his foil for a while. Then he, she's his teammate. But um, they could do a spinoff with her as an archaeological thrill seeker. Um, you come up with a good enough script, she could absolutely carry a series of movies uh, kind of in the Indiana Jones tradition. I think uh, I hope somebody's thinking along those lines. I thought her character was really good. Um, and, and she could carry it on. So I hope they're thinking, um, in, in that way, fun, go see it if you haven't, but, uh, be prepared for it to be, feel a little long. Yeah. And it, does it go a little too far? Probably, but I, uh, I was willing to go there and, uh, obviously love, love the series. <clears throat> There's a tweet out from uh on on wednesday from at throw the damn ball uh titled recognition and accuracy had two charts one <clears throat> pertained to a broader span of time but one was just 2002 and it was the highest percentage of accurate throws to open receivers so the only two quarterbacks who had a higher number of accurate throws to open receivers than ryan Tannehill or Carr and Prescott. So that's pretty impressive. The problem was, the trouble was, that the percentage of throws to open receivers, the percentage of throws to open receivers, was the second worst for Tannehill to Jacoby Brissett. So if you're picturing a graph, Tannehill was really high on the one axis and uh, way to the left on, on the other. It's kind of a testament to the idea that uh, he could hit the open receiver, but he didn't have very many open receivers. Um, so it's another example, another thing that shows the lack of good receivers for the Titans, receivers getting open. And I think also you could factor in there that Todd Downing, um, you know, allowed for him to pass up 
open receivers sometimes, but we talked all year about trying to get them to throw more often to Traylon Burks and Chiga Conquo, um, and they just didn't. Um, they never bulked up on it. Um, so there was something from Charles London um, in the last couple weeks at a symposium talking about feeding your primaries. It's very interesting um, that we'll talk to him about next time we talk to him. But it was not the Titans' philosophy under – it hasn't been the Titans' philosophy really under anybody. They didn't go heavy uh, targeting to anybody. Um, and they should, and they certainly should um, with what they have, how they're constructed now. It needs to be Burks and Chig above all else because third option after that, it's hard to name them, could be Spears. Uh, and then after that, it's really hard to say who the next best guy is going to be. Then it could be game by game based on matchups and all of that. But this is a two and a half receiver team right now in terms of who's threatening. Uh, Titans have to get the ball to those guys on a regular, regular basis. Hassan Haskins, um, all I know about this case is what I read from the Tennessean. Good reporting by Nick Suss there. Aggravated assault by strangulation of felony. Obviously, terrible, terrible charges. Terrible, terrible charge. Uh, fourth round pick from 2022. He'll be in court on July 10th. Um, his girlfriend faces the same charge, plus assault with a deadly weapon and felony vandalism. Not. Uh, it's a complicated case, clearly. Two domestic incidents um, that all of this stems from. Obviously, as soon as anything's going on, Haskins needs to just get the hell out. Get the hell out. You're having an argument that has a chance to turn into something. This isn't just for NFL players. This is for human males. Get the hell out before there's a chance for anything to happen. Whether she, you, whether you perceive her to be the instigator or not, which is, I imagine, what he's going to say based on the charges on both sides <coughs> and what the court documents said. He's got to get the hell out of there. Titans issued the regular statement that they're aware of, of, uh, of the charges and gathering more details. Um, a lot of people expecting him to be immediately cut. I, I think they let the process play out. Um, but he is a great special teams cover guy, but that's eminently replaceable. There's going to be less to cover with the new kickoff fair catch rule. And, um, you know, he's, he's in big trouble, obviously, here. Simply can't do what he did no matter what's going on on the other side and can't let it escalate to a thing where, where she's uh, – got a deadly weapon i mean uh, from what i read and my understanding of it there were plenty of chances for him to get the hell out before it got to that level and that obviously is what needs to happen that's what these guys are told uh, repeatedly by the team by the league by the rookie programs and all of that which he was in a year ago um I, I had Haskins as the fourth running back behind Henry Spears. I think Ward had, has had a nice showing, is more Spears-like, which is probably where they'd like to head. Haskins is more, you know, kind of a first and second down Henry-style runner, though he did not run particularly well in the chances that he had. This is, you know, helps Julius Chestnut's uh, chances, but how deep they go at running back remains to be seen. Um, Haskins, obviously, just going into the second year of the four-year contract that you get as as a rookie uh, will be a big story when um, when the team reports at the end of July. Uh, not a good week last week on the personnel front with the Titans losing NPF to this suspension. And now with this hanging over Haskins, though there'll be uh, some more clarity when he appears in court on uh, July 10th. I'm recording this on July 5th. 
So we shall know more soon. That's all I've got for you. We're a little bit abbreviated with the Titans in such downtime. Though, like I said, there's been more news than we would have liked. I appreciate you joining me. Please check out Jasper's Do Not Block the Box and be sure to lock your locks. See you again soon.